If you want to learn how to launch a business and grow it exponentially and profitably in the first few months and to continue to scale it from there, you're going to love this interview with the founder of Enduro Power Lithium Batteries. Welcome to another episode of the Harvest Growth Podcast, focused on helping consumer product companies, inventors, and entrepreneurs harvest the growth potential of their product businesses. As you'll notice, for those of you watching in video, we've finally moved to our new studio. So we've been off the air for a few weeks as we've gotten everything ready at this new office location. Uh, and I'll do another video post where we'll actually do an office tour, get to see our full kitchen set, family room and bedroom set, a white psych wall and green screen. We're excited for all of that. So I'll keep our, our audience posted. But more importantly, today we're speaking with one of my favorite clients, Harrison Smitty. He's a founder of Enduro Power. You can find his product business at endurobattery.com. He just happens to live about two miles away from my house in Castle Rock. So that's just one of the reasons I really like Harrison. We, we, have, we share a lot of interests, of, one of which is obviously the beautiful place in which we live. But the other side is, is the business side. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so Harrison, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, so much for joining us today. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me. So tell us and our audience about Enduro Power. What is Enduro Power? What do you guys sell? Uh, well, Enduro Power is a manufacturer of uh, lithium batteries, lithium batteries for RVs, boats, uh, off grid solar installations, and also uh, we target uh, the golf cart uh, market as well. Um, and when I say fishing boats, we're talking about uh, trolling motors. So fishermen uh, use them in uh, not only fishing uh, bass boats, but also kayaks is a big growing segment as well. Um, there's a big shift into lithium batteries into these applications uh, right now. Um, and some that are immediate and some are over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, as consumers continue to get more uh, accustomed to using uh, rechargeable batteries, uh, uh, this market is just growing and growing in just about every segment you go after. But those are our kind of key target markets that we're focused after. And um, it's exciting. Um, every day we learn something new. We learn more from our customers, from our suppliers, um, and develop you know, always the product roadmap is always changing because it's just moving that fast. But uh, yeah, so we have a, an assortment of products um, in 12 volt, 24 volts. And we're introducing some uh, additional voltages as we get into 2022 to to hit some of those other key targets that we spoke about. And, um, you know, it's, it's just really exciting. There's a lot of things you can do. It's, it's uh, the, the product and the service we provide is not just a sell a widget and, you know, one and done. Um, usually it's per somebody purchases it once and they're done, but there's a lot of upfront uh, involved research and in what the right product is for them. So we enjoy that. We, we take value in our, our uh, business model that we are able to service that customer, spend the time on the phone with them, answer their questions and help them along in their process uh, to make sure not only they get the right product, um, but they get the right service that they're looking for as well. So, you know, we've worked together for quite a few months and, and really enjoyed it, but I have to say, I didn't realize kayaks were part of the of the target market. Now our team, I'm sure, knows that, right? They've been working on a lot of the targeting and are closer to it than I do. So, what do you use this for in a kayak? What do you use these batteries for in a kayak? Yeah, yeah, it's um, you know, well, first off, that kayak was not a part of our target market uh, when we started, you know, a year and a half ago. So, uh, you know, those things you learn along the way. Um, but uh, there's a big uh, a big move into kayaks, and um, you know, if you if you're in the fish community. Fishing kayaks first will allow you to get into areas that you can't get a large 16, 22 foot boat. Um, and it allows you to get into lower, shallower water and just fish, you know, different areas, um, smaller lakes, ponds, you know, you can just drop in a kayak that, you know, obviously can never launch a boat into. So that in itself has always been there. But uh, with the introduction of lithium batteries, people started throwing troll motors onto the batteries and get into these bodies of waters and they don't have to paddle. They don't have to use their feet to move. They don't have to use, you know, oars to move. Um, so it's, it's a really booming, booming segment. Um, and that's from freshwater to saltwater, East coast to West coast, anywhere in the country, um, big market. And, you know, just for our audience benefit, you'll say this better than me, but there's, you know, there are 
there is the use of powering motors, like you just mentioned, trolley motors, et cetera. And there's also the use of powering kind of everything else. I know like in the camper space, for example, it's not going to drive your camper, especially a trailer forward in any way, but it powers everything else, which could be a lot of, a lot of different things uh, in, in that space as well. And it, I know, you know, you have a passion for the outdoors and that certainly helps. As you mentioned, you know, you didn't know the kayak would be such a big business, but a lot of the other parts of this you did, I think going in because you're familiar with your own industry, uh, especially camping and uh, you know, just general outdoors. How has that helped you to be successful pretty quickly with this business being so familiar with, with who your target market is? Yeah, definitely. I mean, RV was one, our, our, probably our number one target market going into this. Um, that being that I'm an avid RV or camper outdoorsman myself. My business partner is as well. Um, you know, um, as you said, an RV, an RV is basically a home on wheels. Um, you know, if you're plugged into your house or a campground, it, it has all the somewhat creature comforts of, of your home. Um, however, if you, you drive away, it doesn't have the capabilities of doing, you know, powering microwaves, running big, large loads, like air conditioners and things like that. However, with the right batteries and especially with lithium batteries and the right equipment, you can run all that equipment. Um, you can throw solar panels on to recharge. There's, there's kind of endless op uh, opportunities you can do to upgrade an RV, to, um, do all those things if you choose to do, but there's not one right or one way, right or wrong way to do it. You can do all that. You could do none of it, or you could be a million places in between. And uh, the lithium batteries um, have an advantage over their uh, predecessors and a lead acid or an AGM battery that we're used to, which is kind of what you see in your car. Most of the time, um, they just don't have the maintenance requirement. Um, you, you know, that a, an older battery has um, because of that we're humans, humans start off great maintaining things, but after time goes by, we forget, we, you know, other things distract us and take our attention away. And then those old batteries, we don't maintain them and, you know, they become useless after a year or two years, rather than the five years that they should have last a lithium battery. You don't have to maintain it. So if you forget, to, you know, life takes advantage of you and you move on doing something else. Um, the lithium battery is pretty much going to take care of itself. So it allows you to do a lot more, have a lot less stress and spend more time in the outdoors and, and explore and, and fuel your adventure. So. I think, so part of it, as you kind of alluded to is understanding the business, the uses for the product. It helps you in, in the marketing, the copy like, you know, me messaging in general, but one benefit that I've, I've seen as well is you've had a lot of success working with influencers where they've helped promote the brand beyond, beyond just the standard paid campaign that we've had great success with as well on Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, but getting influencers and finding the right ones to work with, it's not always easy, right? It's, it's, it's uh, right. you hear these stories about influencers that create a business, get it off the ground. And, you know, that's only one facet of your success so far, but it, I, I think one of the reasons it's been so successful already and so quickly, I think is, you know who to target, right? You're not wasting dollars on the wrong, call it, call it the wrong influencers or the wrong people out there that don't fit your audience. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Just in, in terms of how you've been able to target the right people that really speak to your true audience. Yeah, I think that's a great topic. And, you know, by no means are we perfect. You know, we've, we've sent product out to some influencers that, you know, I wouldn't say we haven't heard from them, but they had a huge account and then their platform they were on shut them down, you know, had nothing to do with us, but they shut down and boom, they have no audience for us anymore. So um, there's definitely, uh, you know, a learning curve, I think, for anybody uh, as you start to work with influencers. But yeah, for, for sure, definitely knowing like who it is you're looking for and what type of message you're looking to, to convey. And, you know, Endure Power, um, the brands, you know, we're a lifestyle brand. Um, it's, it, it is all about, for us, it's all about branding. I mean, a year, just even a year ago, there were, you know, a couple dozen lithium batteries, uh, in the market in kind of the space we're in. Um, now there's four or five, you know, and there's 50 or 60 different products out there that are doing about the same thing. Now, half of those are direct factor, direct brands, really low price points, you know, probably won't be here in two to three years obviously selling a lot of volume today. A lot of that's pretty much sold through Amazon. Um, totally different business strategy. We're, we're developing a brand for the long term, you know, and the people that are buying our products are looking for, um, you know, somebody they can trust, rely on. We, we, 
tout a 10 year warranty, like most of our competitors and say, okay, well, I could buy something for $300 less, but in four, three years, when I need help, is that person going to be here? Or is this, you know, is Endure Power going to be here to stand, stand behind me? So finding influencers that um, kind of have that, you know, following of, you know, they create content that is uh, educational, helpful, um, genuine, um, they usually find, you know, have followers that enjoy that type of content. And we found that that type of authentic approach is definitely, um, the solid recipe for success in our, our influencer marketing. Actually, I was just reviewing a, a video this morning from, uh, uh, I think it's fishing the Lone Star down in Texas. And the guy's just really authentic, you know, and Dora Power was there, the video, the, the product was in the video multiple times, but, he just said the you know lithium battery for the first six minutes never even said our brand name, which was just great. Versus you know some other um, content creators is like Enduro Power, Enduro Power, Enduro Power, and then it's like whoa, it feels like a commercial. You know, yeah, I mean it's yeah. great, but it felt like a commercial. And um, you know it takes time to figure that out. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think knowing what you're you want for your brand to where you want it to be, not just this month, this quarter, but like, what are you trying to build? Where do you want to be? You know, this is a business we're trying to build over three, five, eight, 10 plus years. Um, so we're not just trying to sell the widget for the next one or two years. And, you know, I understand that obviously there's lots of consumer products. I've been, you know, involved in a lot of consumer product launches that are one or two year launch. Um, so tailor it to what you're looking to do. If you have something that's just needs to be, you know, needs to hit hard now for a year and take advantage of a trend, then, you know, an influencer that just has a lot of followers and just can get your message out there. It's great for us. It's about finding that long-term relationship. Yeah. Well said. And another pitfall I've seen a lot of businesses fall into when dealing with influencers specifically, you talked a lot, a lot about the benefits of them. One of the issues or risks is you send them product, ask them to do a video and they totally miss the mark on the messaging or, you know, frankly, even how to use the product sometimes. And it becomes kind of a waste and, you know, it's, it, they maybe get out to their audience, but you know, we want content typically from influencers that we can repurpose and add into a paid campaign as well as kind of grow within it's, And it's not just about talking positively about your product or about the line of products, but it's also about really understanding it. How I'll just ask the question. I kind of know part of the answer and you haven't done this certainly with every influencer, but with a couple of them, you know, you've actually taken a trip and gone out there and really <laughs> helped them to, to really understand. And I think that's, you know, not, not necessary always, but for the first couple until you get that story out, making sure it's right. Cause now you can send that as an example, like, Hey, here's how you use it, all that kind of stuff. But how did you find that, you know, your direct interaction whether it's in person or whether it's over zoom has really been helpful in making sure that they get the story, right. Yeah, great. I, kind of maybe two examples. One is um, I think it's important to create like kind of a, uh, I'll call it a cheat sheet. I don't know what the right, right word is for it, but uh, something about what your brand is, what your position is, the do's and the don'ts. So for example, it's very easy to call us Enduro batteries, Enduro batteries, but we actually are Enduro power batteries, uh, lithium batteries. So we're very clear and upfront in our conversations with them and also any content or any, uh, uh, literature we provide them, Enduro Power, Enduro Power, Enduro Power. And so we don't want them to have to create, you know, create some great content, and then you know it just says Enduro. Um, you know, in some cases, okay, you know, throw in an Enduro here or there, you know, and, and the whole context thing is fine. But uh, really making sure there's the do's and don'ts, um, understanding, you know, uh, what are the key benefits, what are the key um, reasons to buy for Enduro Power over our competition. Uh, for example, we have a 25% smaller case size than the majority of our competitors, which is a big benefit for our viewers that, you know, it's space is a premium. Uh, sometimes if you're going to the kayak, you might have a small space. Um, those are the things. So there's a couple like, you know, two, two or three key benefits that in the reasons of I, we want them to cover on. Um, and so that little, little cheat sheet, I think is, is great. Um, and it's like one, maybe a two pager, um, something that, you know, you probably are going to cover it off on a phone call, but you probably miss it all. And when they're sitting back there about to create their content, they can kind of just read through, okay, yeah, I need to do this, I need to do that. So that's worked out really well. Um, the other thing is, you know, as you were talking about, you know, taking the time, investing the time to go out, a couple of key influencers, 
Um, you know, I love that. I love being out hands-on. That's just my personality. Um, you know, once this business is fully up and running, I'd love to just be, you know, doing that stuff all the time, you know, and let the team run the business and getting out there and just, you know, working with, um, you know, our users, you learn things, you learn things about, you know, what the new product's going to be. Um, and I'll do a little side thing here. It's not, it's, you know, and we'll talk about the background later on, but, you know, when I first started my career, I was at, uh, uh, Rubbermaid and I was in marketing. We were in an office attached to a factory, and I was told my, you know, vice president of marketing, say, "Hey, I want to go off the factory and walk the floor." And he's like, "Why? Why do you want to do that?" You know, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's where you learn. Yes, yeah, where you yeah. learn what, what goes on." And I had just come from a year out in the field, like working with customers at Lowe's stores in the in the state of Florida, and you just learn things from customers, from store associates, You've just seeing things happen. And it's the same thing with Enduro Power, getting out with those influencers and spending time with them, not only to educate them on what Enduro Power is, what are the you know, key things to say, but you're listening to them. You're listening to like what's going on in, in you know, real life situations. So I really like that. Um, yeah. And I, I just got back uh, last week from a, a, a huge investment in time to, uh, an influencer. Um, they happen to be in Tucson at the time. They are full time. So they, they roam around. Um, but we have a, a really, really big uh, video that's going to go out probably the early 2022, um, where they have just done some insane upgrades to their RV. Um, and Enduro Power obviously is helping out. We invested in providing all the batteries for this very massive battery bank. It's uh, for some of you techies out there, it's 30, 30.7 kilowatt hours of battery, which is, it's a lot of batteries. Um, yeah. But they've done a lot of other cool things that are actually uh, the bigger focus of the video and Enduro Power will be kind of subtly like, you know, the power source of everything that's going on. And this person had the vision of what they wanted to do, but they had no skill set to understand like all the components that connect the battery and convert the power from a battery to run ACs and connect their solars and all these things. They didn't know how to do it. They had a great vision. They had the budget. They had the, you know, all the, this grand plan, but they needed somebody to pull it together. And I stepped up to the plate and said, okay, I'd spent a lot of time, you know, I had to, I had to procure product. I had to tell them what to, to go get. I had to, lay out schematics and I went down there. It was supposed to be a seven day commitment. It ended up being almost a 12 day commitment. I don't know if that's really you know, at this early on in the business, um, definitely worth the time. Cause I'm highly confident that the, the, the views on this video will be well into the 300,000 and the potential over a million based on this YouTuber in the past and other videos. Um, not saying people should go out and spend that much time. Uh, you know, most of the time, I'm pretty positive I'll get a solid ROI on that. And uh, as you said, John, not only is it good um, for our business, um, I think calculated it's going to be a great return on investment. But in the process, I learned things on the install that I ran into issues and learned things that the next person that calls us on the phone will be able to help them, you know, uh, easy, uh, help them be, move through any issues they had that maybe we didn't know uh, prior to that experience. So. Um, yeah, it's good. Uh, I think those are kind of two things that cheat sheet and then, uh, you know, spending some time with key, key, uh, influencers. Um, and I'll add last one, last thing, um, we're bringing on, uh, we're sponsoring the university of Tennessee fishing club. Um, I'm a, I'm an alum from the university of Tennessee. So once I kind of got in the realm and somebody introduced me to the Florida state fishing team, I'm like, Oh, hold on, hold on. We <laughs> Let's do this with Tennessee. So didn't even know they had a fishing club, reached out to them got involved. I'm going to be their title sponsor, um, send a couple of the key guys, some batteries. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, these are, you know, college kids. Are they really going to influence the person that's got a $30,000 bass boat that has money to buy a thousand dollar battery? Probably not. But I went down that path and it ends up that one of those, one of those kids, um, uh, father-in-law is a big fishing guide up near Lake Geneva in Wisconsin and installs batteries on about 200 boats per year. So him and I get on the phone for two hours and now he's basically helping with our product roadmap for the whole fishing segment. So um, the lesson learned there is you never know where you're going to, you know, make a connection. And in this case, I just went with my gut, which is it was the right thing to do for the brand and for the business. And it's opened up a whole new uh, opportunity for us.
That's awesome. Yeah. And I love the, the quote that's something like, you know, hard work leads to good luck essentially. Right. So it's, you know, getting, it's kind of like getting your name out there in many different ways. Not all of them are going to hit, right. You can't count on every single, especially in a marketing world, marketing activity to work well. But when you do several like this, you're going to, you're going to come across amazing opportunities, a lot of good opportunities and a couple like that, that just are much bigger than you expect. And it just comes down to getting, you know, spending time, sometimes spending a little bit of money and, and really just pushing yourself forward and, and getting out there. Let me take a break for a second to, to share a quick message from our, one of our sponsors. And this is one that we've, we've worked a lot with as we helped Harrison de- design their website, endurobattery.com on the Shopify platform. Um, you know, there's a reason that over 1.7 million e-commerce businesses trust Shopify to handle everything from marketing and payments to secure checkout and shipping. Now, dozens of our clients, including Enduro Battery, are built on this platform and have seen great success. One of the reasons is because they connect so well. Shopify sites with Facebook, Instagram from a communication standpoint, et cetera. For a limited time, we can actually help you get your first month free if you'd like to try out Shopify. It's usually a savings about 79 bucks. Just reach out to somebody in our team at Shopify at HarvestGrowth.com to learn more. We had uh, an influencer that we onboarded. Uh, we gave them battery. I think we even invested in a, a battery monitor and something about a thousand dollars total. We in, invested in, into them. And I mean, on the surface, they look like they, they just do exactly our demographic, you know, they great, beautiful, organic content. And, um, you know, like a couple of weeks went by, we haven't heard from them and we're like, Hey, should we reach out to them? And so there's, there's this question of like, what's the cadence and how, how much should you be pushing an influencer once you've onboarded them, you know, to make sure they're doing what we've agreed upon, mutually agreed upon doing. And, you know, every week it was kind of like, okay, it's been about five weeks, you know, you can maybe give them a nudge, drop a little email. And it, it, it was kind of like, ah, it's not my highest priority right now. Let me just let it go. And then boom, on Saturday, we get an email from them. It's like this beautiful four minute video. And it's like epic, like drone footage, just phenomenal with great imagery. And so it's kind of like my gut feeling of like, these people are going to deliver. I'm not worried about it. Now you have to decide that, you know, there's some people you go after and like, wow, oh, they got 500,000 followers on X platform, you know? And, you know, you might look at their content like, okay, well, this person is great. You know, is this, you know, are they really going to follow up? Um, you might have to follow up with that person, but there's certain people you're like, okay, they're going to deliver, just give them the time. And I think, um, especially those people, you kind of feel that way, give them the space because they're going to give, get you that content. Now you obviously have a basic contract or something in place to, if, if time goes by, you've given them a couple of nudges, nothing's out there. You can you know, pick up the phone, you have that conversation. But I guess my point here is, um, you know, you sometimes want to give those influencers the space to cre- create their content. Yeah. You got to remember they are creatives at the end of the day, right? They're not all call you know, some are great at business, right? But some, some of the reason they're so successful sometimes is because they're, they're creative people at the end of the day. And sometimes that comes with not meeting deadlines on time or, or whatever, but it, if it comes out at the end of the day that they're creative is awesome. It's worth it. Great point. Yep. So, you know, we've talked a lot about influencers, how to find them, how to train them, how to make sure they, they work well. Uh, there's obviously other things that are driving your, like what I call crazy high ROIs, you know, great success you've had with your business. You know, what else do you think is driving your success? Um, I guess I, it, it, this is a good point for me to tell you a little bit about, a little bit about my background. Um, you know, I've had a vision and dream to start my own business uh, for close to 20 years. I've been in, I've been in, the, in, 2001 was my first job, went right into consumer goods. And it was about 2000, uh, it was about 2005, 2004, sorry, 2004, when I had experience, I was doing sales. I was at Lowe's Home Improvement, about to go into pitch to a buyer. And there was another young uh, guy in there about to do the same. And he was about my age, mid twenties, and they had a successful product. And I'm like, oh, tell me about it. How'd you do it? You know? And, um, He's like, yeah, my buddy had this great idea and he, he brought me on to do sales and it's just the two of them. They're just crushing it in this, in this product back in the early two thousands. And it was that day when I walked out of there, it's like, I'm going to take everything I'm doing, you know, from product marketing to product, uh, development, my, my, uh, desire to go to the factory and learn what things are, you know, how things are done, um, interacting with consumers. Um, obviously there's a brand piece of it. And it was that point in time, like 
probably around 2004 when I said there will be a day when I launch uh, a product on my own. And, you know, that uh, the point of bringing that up was that was 2004. This is now 2021. And this idea for Endure Power started in 2022. So there was a 16 year gap there that I went from, I'm going to do this to here's the concept. Here's where I'm going to go. And so I'll always along through my career, I'm always looking, you know, these things might work, but it's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Let's not go on this. Uh, with Endure Power, um, it was a couple things for me, obviously being very passionate about the products, um, you know, I'm avid RVer, that's kind of what me, got me into lithium batteries and introduced when I added solar and started wanting to power air conditioners and things like just went down that rabbit hole. I did have a background in batteries. Um, I headed up marketing for Rayback batteries for uh, four or five years prior to that. Um, so that with passion of it, um, I had some once I dove into it on, on my personal level, I had some, uh, I wouldn't say unpleasant experiences, but like learning curves of the, the products that I did purchase. I'm like, man, this could be done better. And I just went down the rabbit hole and I started talking to suppliers um, of, uh, and found out that like, wow, the, the standard cost of this is X. The retails are here. Okay, there's decent margins. Then I started looking at the um, competition was out there and the pros and cons to you know, who was out there and what they're doing and what their target markets were, their strengths were. And it's like, man, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, and then, you know, a couple, a lot of people when they're starting consumer goods businesses these days are obviously looking at Amazon. Uh, I had a little background on Amazon and in Solo Central and did some research there. I, I forget it, but like one of the rating scores for the category was a little bit more appealing than, you know, widget A or widget B that's out there. Yeah. And it just kind of confirmed a lot of things to me. It's like, wow, great opportunity. Now, the, the biggest barrier to entry in, in the business we're in is capital. Um, if you want to get into this business, you know, if I want to have, you know, a couple hundred batteries sitting on the floor to be able to ship out the customer, I need a couple hundred thousand dollars to be able to have the inventory there, let alone all the other things to start the business. So, all those things combined, there's a great opportunity because you just aren't going to have the competitors flooding in, you know, just doing their overnight Amazon business because it's it's a huge outlay to get into it. So um, I take all of that 16 years of you know knowledge uh, along with, um, you know, the past year and a half journey to get to the point where we said Endure Power is what we're going to do. Um, so that's kind of a little quick overview of what we got into, how we got into it. And then as I've, as I've moved into it, it's like, it's not just RV, it's, it's fishing, it's golf cart. And by the way, I was an avid fisher, you know, growing up, I don't fish as much now, but I was when I grew up, spent a lot of time on a bass boat. Um, I'm a big golfer, spent a lot of time on a golf cart. So it's so fun now to be involved and talk to people that do all the things that I love to do. Um, and I just, you know, I have this vision that three to five years from now that I'm out just playing with all these people, you know, yeah. having fun. So. That's great. Yeah, no, I, I, and I think that's maybe one of the reasons I think we get along so well is our backgrounds are sort of similar. I did know something similar where I started off with big consumer packaged goods companies at uh, Kraft and then OxyClean before starting my own thing. And, I, you know, I think there's something there in terms of bringing wisdom. You, know, you can bring intelligence, you can bring kind of tenacity to it, and that's all important, right? But Wisdom mm -hmm. comes with with some time. It doesn't have to be sixteen years for sure, right? But yeah. but I think there's there's value in whatever our field is. So we got some listeners that are you know just wanting to get into this market of launching their own product, and you know experience can be helpful. We've you know at the same time we've got some clients that start young and find success fast, and that's that's great. But there's a difference. There's a difference in terms of you know the decisions you can make on your own. You know you're very wise in the way you run the business. Others may need to build a bigger team around them to fill in some gaps that they that they might have, et cetera. So let me ask you, you know, is advice for our audience, again, for product marketers, inventors, entrepreneurs, are there any resources that you use in your life that you recommend, you know, could be a, a book or podcast or anything that's influenced you and you feel has helped you to be successful? Well, first off, I, I, I'll be a very open book that I, I'm not a huge book reader, except kind of the light bulb went off. I reinvented myself maybe two and a half years ago, which is actually definitely what spurred me into, um, you know, where I'm at today. Um, and it was, uh, actually, I have to give a, a credit, a little bit of credit to a guy named Benjamin Hardy. Um, and he has a, a program called amp 10 X and it was just basically about like, you know, 
everybody knows what they need to do, but you know, he's basically coaching me as like a, a business coach of like, here are the basic principles to, you know, have a functional day, a functional week, a functional month and, and year. And I won't dive much, much deeper in there, but, um, his, uh, his podcast, his, uh, YouTube videos, the things he does. And, and he ultimately has, you know, two books that we read a month. As I said before, I don't read books. I can't read a book. If I read a book, I fall asleep. And so my wife said, Hey, you know, you should listen to podcast you know, or listen to audiobook. sorry, audiobook. And so I, I downloaded these books and, and then it still is tough. Like listening to book while I'm doing something else, you, you forget what's going on. Well, I'm an avid athlete. I, I run, I cycle, um, mountain bike, whatever it is, I swim. You can do all those things through audiobooks. So I found for me, since that's such a big thing for me, while I'm working out, if I'm listening to an audiobook, it is amazing because one, I'm out there doing what I need as a part of my daily routine, which is a part of this whole thing. Um, but two, when I'm listening to uh, rich content like that, um, while I'm working out, my brain just soaks it up like a sponge. Can't do it any other time of day. It's pointless for me to listen to it while I'm just going in the car, doing the things because my brain focuses on other things. But while I'm working out for me, it is just an amazing way to absorb that content. So over the last two years, I've read over like 25 books. I've listened to over 25 books. Um, I would say two that uh, really uh, stick out to me. One is called The Miracle Morning by, I think it's Hal Elrod. And, um, you know, without getting into detail of that, it's just basically like, have a plan for the morning, have that routine, you know, don't roll over, hit the snooze, you know, roll down through a Facebook feed or something like that. Like if you know from the night before, here are the two or three things I need to do in the morning, along with some of the basic routine you have for mine. It's like, I got to get out the door. I got to work out. Like if I, as soon as I work out, come back, everything else for the day is phenomenal. Um, so Miracle Morning, I, I recommend checking that out. Um, one other one that's a uh, podcast slash now audiobook that I think is great for the consumer, anybody in consumer goods, um, is How I Built This by Guy Raz. I mean, obviously, he's been around for a while and has a great podcast out there. But he released a book, I think about a year ago. And I'm not exaggerating when I say I've listened to it seven times. <laughs> um, and because there, there's probably like 24 different little segments throughout the thing and they're covering different areas. And if you're launching a consumer good uh, product, there's five, six, maybe 10 plus segments you're gonna just resonate with you or, or give you a little bit of encouragement in, a, in the part of the business that you may not be paying a lot of attention to and you need to, and it might give you that motivation. So those are two quick ones I throw out there. Awesome. And I'm going to add, you know, as we get this out, I think this has been a great interview. I'm going to add your interview on our show and my recommendations to others as well. If you're looking to learn on how to get started, how to launch, uh, you've been really inspirational for our audience. So thanks, Harrison. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think could be helpful for our audience? Um, knowing and doing enough research to understand who you think and believe your target market is, is I think is really key um, when you're getting out, getting out and getting started. I think most of us that start a new product or an invention, we come from a, a point of passion, a point of our own experience. And as a, as a you know, lifetime product marketer, uh, it's really important to put your own bias aside. You know, there's definitely a market just like you, the person's passionate about it, but there might be bigger markets out there. So take that time to really understand your target market uh, as you develop that brand and, and launch. That's great advice. Harrison, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time. For the listeners, I encourage you to go to endurobattery.com. We'll put the URL in the show notes as well. So if you're driving, go check out the show notes later on so you can find it. Uh, you know, even if you're not in the market for buying lithium batteries, it's just a great, it's a great way to see what work Harrison has done. He's put a great site together, a great business together. Go check it out. I encourage you. Also be sure to check out harvestgrowthpodcast.com to see other episodes we've recorded. And if you like this episode, you want to learn more about how you can profitably grow your consumer product business, please subscribe to our show and leave us a review at iTunes and Google Play. Thanks so much.